Insta Snap for the morning, what's going on? Thank you to Josh Newton who sent me this fantastic shirt. I I soil my shirts a lot, and so a lot of people send me their t-shirts. I use them all the time. Hello, Insta Snap. What's going on? I went to Orifice Works, by the way, and I got all these new pens and pads. I've got these pens. They're for mini lessons. We're gonna do one. Uh, question. Do you feel low? Do you feel down? Do you feel stagnant? Do you have low motivation? Are you getting beat up and down by your nine to five job? If you answered yes to any of the questions prior, listen up. Uh, you might wanna get a pen and write this down. I've mentioned this before. The motivation formula is incredibly, ridiculously easy. Everyone on earth ought to know it. It's very easy. There's only two things that is motivation. That's one, having a vision. Two, being in the right gear. So whenever anyone says, I got the no motivation, I got the low motivation, first thing I say is, what's the vision? What's the goal? What's the outcome that you need the motivation for? Most of them don't know. <laughs> Most of them fucking have no clue what the vision is. Most people reply to that with what they don't want. I don't know what I really want. Let me tell you what I don't want. I don't want this bullshit. That's why I say, okay, well, you're doing a fucking animal escapism. You're hating and not being grateful for what you got and you're trying to avoid it. And the small percentage of people who do know what they want and they're able to voice that and express that, they haven't really put a great amount of thought and planning into it. Okay, so you want the house and the car and you want to work from home? Cool, how much is that going to cost? Where's it going to be? What does it look like? What does it sound like? And before you go and get those goals, how much income do you actually need to make before you can go and pay your taxes and pay your savings and pay your investment portfolio to go and actually go and buy those things and realize those goals? Do you know what income you need to make? Do you know how many businesses you need to start? Do you know how much product you need to sell? No, I haven't really, haven't really thought about it, is what most, most people say. Most people haven't fucking thought about it. I say that you... I say you, you don't have a goal. You don't have a vision. You have a fantasy infatuation. You've seen someone on social media and you want to copy their life. I'm going to say that these infatuations that, you, that you're running, these things that you think that you want, they're not your real visions. It's another form of animal-minded escapism. You're trying to escape your real life with these undercooked fantasies. Real soul-guided purpose makes your hair stand up. And contrary to motivational rah-rah hype, real soul-guided inspiration grounds you, it centers you, it, it gives you poise. You don't get excited and elated, you have grounded focus. And you've seen it before, you read the book, you go to the seminar, you go to the motivational rah-rah, you get excited, you get, you get excited. That comes down, that crashes. But true inspiration, soul-guided purpose with a vision in your mind, that's something that's truly, truly, truly important to you, stimulates a fire from within, an inspiration of the soul, if you will. And when you're in that state, it doesn't oscillate, it doesn't wane, you don't need to watch your motivational rah-rah videos every day, that's absolutely ridiculous. When it's truly important for you, you'll be grounded and you'll keep doing it. And the time and space horizons, your mind will expand and you'll be dedicated your life to this because it's not this, I'm in pain, I need to do an escape, I need to get this shit fixed by next week. So many people want the financial independence by fucking 10 days time. It's, it's ridiculous, it's escapism is what it is. When you find your thing and you get that vision, you dedicate your life to that. My life is this now. And when you find that, you're in no rush. And so you set realistic time frames and you chunk down the tasks, which brings me to the second point, getting the right gear. Here we go, here's a cool drawing. This is the motor, this is the gearbox, this is your wheels. Metaphorically speaking, the motor represents the power unit. That's your vision. That's what's driving the whole thing. The gearbox is what gear you're in. And depending on what gear you're in, you'll have a different amount of power getting pushed through to the wheels. The wheels in the metaphor represent your real world success. That's your movement, that's your momentum, that's your speed, that's your acceleration, that's your level of success. You can have a big engine, but if you're in seventh gear and you're not moving anyway, you're trying to take off with the traffic lights in seventh gear, you won't go no place. Now, what do most people do? They haven't got any momentum. They're at the traffic lights. They're starting their journey. At the very start of their journey, they go and follow someone on social media. They get infatuated. They try and start off from the traffic lights in seventh gear. Their motor's pretty weak. And the light goes green. Boom. Foot flat to the floor. <laughs> what happens? It doesn't matter with size motor. Even the Lambo is a big fucking powerful motor. You go and start in seventh gear, you don't go far. You lag and labor. And you've seen yourself do this. Foot flat to the floor, you're burning yourself out. You're not getting any place. And then you see a fucking Toyota Prius zip past you. You see someone who you know you're smarter than. You've got a bigger motor than and they're caning you. Happens all the time. You're in the wrong gear. 
Metaphorically, that means that you're taking on too much at once. You're taking on too much at once. You need to chunk down your shit, set realistic time frames, set longer time horizons, and take it step by step. Little steps every day. You don't get that much done in a day. Especially if you're still going to work at a nine to five. Holy fuck, I don't know how anyone in a job, I don't know how the hell I got out of a job. It's a, it really is a trap. You gotta go to work and then you gotta come home and you gotta be on. You gotta be hustling. You could get out of it. You'll never get out of it otherwise. But listen here, if you are gonna get out of it, you wanna get out of it, you gotta have a big dog motor. You gotta have a lot of vision. You gotta have a lot of clarity. You gotta have a master plan. And it's gotta be true for you. It's gotta give you goosebumps. It's gotta make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. And step two, you've got to get in the right gear. What's your 200-year plan? Do you have a legacy that you want to leave behind 200 years from now? What's your 200-year plan? What's your 100-year plan? What's the 50-year, 30-year, 20-year, 10-year, 5-year plan? What's the 1-year plan? What's the this-week plan? And then what is the highest priority action steps that you can do every single day, consistently and methodically and diligently to make it all come true? When you find it, when you've got the daily step-by-steps, all you do is take a step every day. That's it. So if you're cloudy of mind, if you haven't figured out your soul-guided purpose, if you haven't set goals, if you haven't properly set goals, go and read Lesson 8 again. If you're not an infinite prosperity student, get the course just for Lesson 8, even if you're not going to become an investor. Because I guarantee if you do Lesson 8 of IP properly and methodically and thoroughly, and it takes time, by the way, to do it properly, you will shorten the time it takes you to reach your goals. But how many people actually want to go and invest in their future? <laughs> A fraction of a fraction of 1%. Very rare. And the success rate on planet Earth is a fraction of a fraction of 1%. Niceness side. Is this what you see every day? <laughs> <laughs> Put the cut, turn the vehicle on, okay. Robin. Right. Jeez, bloody gosh. Come on. But look, I'm as ready as I'm gonna ever be. Feeling, <laughs> yeah, are you feeling good? You can go down. Sure. Go, let's go. Come on. You, you're going well so far. Thanks. <laughs> the steering wheel's too high. I can't see over it. Oh my lord. So from this, you can really see yourself here in the mirror. Yeah. That's do you do I, that? Is that what I you do every morning? Every morning. <laughs> Yeah, That's... you can't see shit out this one. Yeah, you can't see shit. Of course not. <laughs> oh my lord. Just, yeah. Maybe don't snapchat the shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snap no, no. $10,000 rims. You do not want to hit. <laughs> do not hit the gutter. Just, uh, you know, take it at wide angles is, is the way of the game. Got it the indicator, right? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, god. Oh my god. I'm a little nervous. Yeah, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Take it easy. Is it a little, little faster than the Swift or what? <laughs> <laughs> What's your first impressions? Yeah, she's nice. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit firm? Yeah, she's a bit rough, eh? A bit rough, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>